Hey guys, Sean C. Phillips here with our brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video today. They're going to go out, see what things come out today, see what things are on sale. I know, you know, one of the big releases today, you know, was Despicable Me 3. I know there's a number of different, you know, retail exclusive editions of that one that come out today. But there's actually quite a few different things releasing today, like uh, Twin Peaks Season 3 on Blu-ray, uh, the uh, Simpsons Season 18, you know, they're finally releasing The Simpsons again on DVD, as well as a number of other things as well. As well as, you know, Walmart always changes out the actual section of movies and gets in more, like, indie horror and, like, more different kind of titles in, in the actual section. Always get them in, you know, the first Tuesday of every month. So definitely, you know, look forward to seeing, you know, what they have in there for that. And there's one interesting one that's like a remake that comes out. But I'm going to try and find there, you know, this horror remake. So hopefully they have that one. Also, the one thing I want to let you guys know about, too, is this uh, anthology movie called 60 Days to Die, released today from Cynodyne. And this is a, like, every, you know, it's a whole bunch of horror shorts on here, a bunch of directors all around the world directed segments on this. And I, I have a segment on here along with Danny Sinistalker that we did together. Pretty fun segment in here of, you know, like this dare thing that we do and what happens to Danny and stuff. But this one, you know, released today. It's a pretty fun, like I said, anthology movie. And it's all, each, all the segments in it are only, you know, a minute long. And it's all involved with like something happening to someone or someone dying or a haunted story and all that kind of thing, all within a span of a minute. So, you know, this one released today and it's on Amazon and, uh, you know, BestBuy.com and all those kind of things. So you definitely, uh, if you get a, guys get a chance to check this one out, you know, let me know what you thought of it. Also, though, at the end of this video, I'm going to have some new DVD and Blu-ray reviews for some things I received to review and talk about. So stay tuned for those as well. But anyway, though, guys, let's get going and see what we can find today. Into Target we go. Now, hopefully, you know, all the stuff is put out in here today because the last couple weeks, Target hasn't put out the stuff till much later in the day. So keeping my fingers crossed, you know, that all the movies and stuff are put out already. Well, it doesn't look like it's all out. I see like it looks like it's all getting stocked again, so probably going to have to head to another location. Yeah, it didn't even seem like on that table they had out all the other stuff as well. Like I said, though, it's been the last, like, at least month. Every single Tuesday, I usually get here like 12.30 and the stuff isn't out, so we'll have to head later, though, to another Target. Hopefully that one, you know, has all the stuff out. Into Walmart we go. And in here today though, and I don't think this is, I don't know if this one is an exclusive one for Walmart only. They have this gift set here for Despicable Me 3, which has some kind of like a, I don't know what this thing is, some kind of a, oh yeah, like a minion backpack thing. This one is $24.99 for that one, and then $19.99 for the standard edition Blu-ray without the, you know, uh, backpack thing. I don't see any 4Ks of the one here, but this is one of the other things that released today, this, um, you know, and this one is an only at Walmart one. It's a Spider-Man limited edition uh, gift, set, gift set thing here for Spider-Man Homecoming. It has in here like the Blu-ray, uh, Spider-Man socks, a collectible pin, a Funko Pop, uh, you know, urban vinyl thing in here, as well as some kind of like a comic book cover type thing in here. And also um, American Assassin released today. And I reviewed this one a week or so back. This is actually kind of a cool movie, you know, like uh, him getting revenge on what happened to his girlfriend. And that's $24.99 for the 4K and then $19.99 for the uh, standard Blu-ray. And I believe this release today, this one called Champion, as well as this one that stars uh, John Cusack called Singularity. Like, I don't know much about this one at all. Like, looks like some kind of like a robot movie. And this one down here, uh, Santa Stole Our Dog, like an Ed Asner movie from Universal. Like, he, and he's done a couple like uh, Christmas movies recently. So a couple things in here though are missing though. And, but this one released today as well, this Better Watch Out, which I reviewed this one recently. Really, really great movie. Really like this one a lot. Like a great like home invasion movie with like a great twist to it. And both the kids in this were uh, the kids from um, uh, The Visit. So it's kind of cool to see them both in this movie like totally different parts. And over here though, I see some stuff's missing though. So I don't know for sure you know, what some of these ones that came out were. I believe this one called a, The Better Better Half released today, and this one, um, Six Bullets to Hell, I believe this was today, as well as this Nicolas Cage movie called Vengeance. So I don't know much about this one. If you guys have seen this one, let me know, though, how this one was. And then uh, this one, The White King, I believe this was, was today. But the one that released today that I was going to get, though, was this one, Dementia 13, which is like a remake. And I remember the original movie being kind of cool, so definitely kind of interesting how this remake of this one will be. The other one that came out today was this one, The uh, Crucifix fiction but other than that though that seems to be all the major different ones but like I said there are some empty spots here so not 100% sure you know what some of these other ones were and I didn't see over here TV wise the Simpsons or Twin Peaks over here 
and they have the holiday movies out here now. And they have this office Christmas party one here with like a totally different slip cover here. I don't know if it's like a new one. I don't remember ever seeing this one before. And they have like this Grinch one here for $14.99. It's kind of cool one, like if the Grinch is like fur kind of thing. It's kind of an interesting one. Other than that though, I don't see anything really different wise except for this set here, which is like the Home Alone 5 movie collection here. And I think it's like $14.99 for all five of them together. I hopefully at some point they release, you know, part three on Blu ray because that one I, has never come to Blu ray. It's just been the same DVD they've re released again throughout the years. Yeah, so in there though, I ended up getting uh, this one last week I saw. Kind of was interested in seeing this. I really like the movie, the Trolls movie. It's like a short, like, holiday special, but I got the Dementia 13. And if you guys are interested in this one, on the website, it's really cheap on uh, Walmart.com. It was only like $6.26, so they were actually able to price match it. So it was really cheap. It was like, you know, rang up $9.96. So $6.26 is a really great price for this one. I don't know how this one is, but definitely one I'm really interested in seeing because, as I remember, I liked the original one. I think I think it might have been Francis Ford Coppola's, like one of his really early movies, but I might be totally wrong, but definitely am interested in seeing this one, though. Into the second Target we go. And right here in the front, though, I see a, you know, a standy here for Despicable Me 3. And they have this one here, which is their exclusive edition. You know, only a Target one here, which has 20 minutes of bonus content. And I'm not sure if it's a, a bonus DVD or it's on, you know, digitally the bonus stuff. And it also includes character cards and temporary tattoos. And that exclusive edition here is $22.99 for that edition. Uh, and then they also have over here, you know, the standard edition Blu-ray here is $19.99. I don't see the 4K again, too. I'm pretty sure, though, they released this one, as far as I know, on 4K. They also have this uh, three-movie collection here, which has all three of the Despicable Me movies together. There only seems to be, though, the DVD for that one. And I'm not sure if they released that one on Blu-ray as well, you know, with all three of them together. But over here, though, they actually have this stuff out, and they have American Assassin over here. And then this one, the other things that released today, Jumanji, the 4K edition here. That one's $22.99. I should have a review of this one soon. And I know that there's going to be, you know, is an exclusive steelbook of that one at Best Buy. So I'll have to see if they have that one out. And they do have The Simpsons, the complete uh, 18th season here for $34.99, as well as Fargo Year 3, which released today, and then 24 uh, Legacy. I'm going to have a review of all of these ones at the end of this video, so definitely stay tuned for these ones at the end of this video. And this past weekend, I saw two different films. Uh, the first one I saw was Murder on the Orient Express. And I've never actually seen any of the other... Um, renditions of that story because I know they've you know turned that into like a number of different like films in the past and I think probably I think there's even like a TV series or something like that of it I believe but and it's one of those ones too the new one you know got really mixed reviews but I like these kind of you know it's an ensemble piece it's like a whole bunch of different people in there like Johnny Depp's in there or William Defoe uh, you know the director is in it he actually stars in it as well playing the inspector character and I liked his you know his character in this but it's somebody you know um he plays like this inspector who's like a world-class inspector who can kind of solve all these cases and he's you know no nothing can get, you know get past him and you know he's going on this um you know really fancy train to get to his next destination for his next case and on the train uh character ends up getting killed and it's kind of him on there trying to investigate the murder before they get to the station so they you know solve this case why the train is in motion and figure out you know who killed this person like talking to all the people and seeing if they have motives and all that kind of stuff i don't know i like sometimes these really hot heavy dialogue movies and I really did get into it, like, and I think not knowing the story at all, like, I had heard of the story, but I didn't know, like, the outcome or anything like that, I think that kind of helped, I feel like maybe if you knew everything that happened in this, it wouldn't seem as, like, new, but I don't know, I think it's definitely worth checking out, though, I had a fun time with the movie, and like I said, I like those kind of dialogue -y movies, the other one that I saw, you know, was Pixar's new film, Coco, and I have to say, that movie was outstanding, it's probably one of my favorite Pixar movies in a really long time, I think my last favorite Pixar one that I, like, really, really love is Wally. I think that's a slightly underrated Pixar movie, this one, though, Coco definitely had the feel to um, um, Nightmare Before Christmas, it had that kind of vibe, because this kid 
you know, his family doesn't, you know, because of some stuff that happened in the past, they never liked music and they kind of banished it from the whole family. And he really loves music. And, you know, they, you know, break his guitar and are mad at him for actually playing and like, you know, going against the families, what they believe in and, and being all against music. And he ends up stealing the uh, guitar from who he finds out is his grandfather, who's this huge celebrity who passed away years and years back, um, but he ends up stealing the guitar and then gets sent to the um, other world, with, you know, with like the death world. And it's kind of him there in the death world, having to try and figure out how he's going to get back and stuff and trying to, you know, meet and find his grandfather and stuff. I don't know. It's a really, really great movie. The one complaint, you know, there's a lot of complaints on this, and I believe Disney is actually removing it, as far as I, cause I was reading, is that Frozen short at the beginning of the movie. It was like 23 minutes long or something, and it was really pretty bad like it was not very good at all like I don't I don't know like you know Frozen was actually a pretty decent movie that short like went on and on because like normally the shorts in these movies are usually like maybe five minutes ten minutes at the tops this thing really felt like a TV special that they you know put in the theaters I don't know let me know what you guys thought of that short if you did see that it just didn't fit to the tone at all either of this movie I also thought Coco should have released more like around Halloween time because it felt more like a Halloween type film but really really outstanding movie though let me know though what you guys thought if you guys saw either of those movies or what you guys saw this past weekend into Best Buy we go and over here though I believe they're gonna have a, there's a bunch of different exclusive steelbooks today like they have you know one here for American Assassin here the exclusive steelbook packaging one for that and that one's $24.99 and that's the Blu-ray one in there, because sometimes the Steelbooks have the 4Ks. Their 4K of American Assassin is $24.99. Other than that, though, I know, I'm pretty sure there's some other ones that they should have Steelbook-wise. You know, they do have a, they put the Despicable Me movies out on Steelbook, and I believe these ones just released, the first and second one. I don't think these ones have been out before, and these are some pretty cool ones. They actually do have a 4K set of all of the um, Despicable Me movies together. But today, though, they got, a, like I said, a lot of steelbooks. The Despicable Me one, uh, part three, that released today. They have, I think these have been released in the past. Th this might be new, this John Wick one here. But they released this today, this Get Out. Uh, the only a Best Buy one for $14.99, as well as one of Split. And I believe both of these released today, as well as Fury, a steelbook, and Whiplash. And then they also have um, the Men in Black trilogy here. This is a 4K trilogy of all the movies together for $42.99, as well as the Jumanji uh, steelbook here. And this is actually a really cool steelbook because it's done just like the board game. So that's definitely a very cool steelbook. And they have here as well this limited edition set, uh, which is a steelbook here for Home Alone, which has Home Alone and Home Alone 2. And that one's um, only $14.99 for this one. So that's a pretty cool steelbook if you guys don't have those ones. But like I said, definitely did release a ton of different uh, steelbooks today. And I think, I don't know if this was new as well, this Fantastic Beast ones. I'm not 100% certain on that. And then over here, though, they do have Twin Peaks Season 3 here. You know, I don't know if they're going to do another season of this. I, it would be so cool if they did, but you know, I just got this one in here today to review, so I'm going to have a review of this one. Probably will be up next Tuesday. I'm going to talk about that. There's tons of features on here, like all kinds of behind-the-scenes stuff on it, so really did a great job on the features for this one. And then they have The Simpsons, the uh, 18th season here as well for $37.99. But other than that, I don't see any other different ones over here but like I showed in the front though tons and tons of new steelbooks have released today so anyway though guys that's all for this DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video today like I said tons of steelbooks in there today got in a whole bunch of new ones some really pretty cool ones as well but anyway though guys like I always say if you guys enjoyed these uh, you know shopping videos definitely give this video a thumbs up now stay tuned now for some new DVD and Blu-ray reviews and the first one I got here from um, Universal is a movie called Victorian Abdul and I actually saw this movie in theaters as well it's a really really great movie starring Judy Dench it's about these two men who come over from India and they're coming to present this ring to the queen that you know they have this like special ring and there's all these kind of comedic stuff too about the guys from India about who's gonna you know have the ring on the pillow and all this stuff and there's all these rules like don't look at the queen don't address the queen don't say anything to the queen you know and all this stuff they have to do but of course though the one guy ends up actually looking at the queen and and the queen like kind of like gets interested in this guy and they, it's kind of they sort of start talking and it's about him ending up you know, along with 
the other man from India moving into the to Buckingham Palace, and um, it's kind of about the friendship between both of them, him and the Queen, and he's like teaching her about his culture and telling her about like um, things that they do and like the items of food that they eat and all this stuff. So it's it's all about like a character piece about their friendship, but it deals with too the um, you know the Queen's family though like why is this man here? What are they talking about? Because they're always like going in rooms together, locking the door, going on walks together. And the queen like, who is kind of like this because it's her later years of life was kind of like, um, kind of not doing much and they had a hard time getting her to wake up and do anything and she's always exhausted but once this man comes around it kind of it like revitalizes her life and she wants to do things again wants to do things with this guy and it's all about their friendship and then at the back of this is all about the family of the queen like going why is this going on why is he not leaving how are we going to get rid of him we don't want him here anymore it's a really really well done character piece movie really love this movie that you know Judy Dench did an amazing job in this one one I would highly recommend you guys check out has on here though a uh, making of on this movie but really really well done movie the next one here from uh, Universal as well as the movie starring Reese Witherspoon called Home Again. This movie was okay this wasn't an absolutely perfect movie it's kind of a fun light-hearted movie though it's about Reese Witherspoon who recently went through a divorce and these three guys, she ends up going to the bar one night, kind of trying to pick up a guy. And she meets this much, much younger guy who's like like 21 or something like that. And I think she's like 40 in the movie, something around that age. And she has kids, you know, older kids that are like, I think they were like, 13 or one was like 11 12 13 something like that and she ends up you know hooking up with this one younger guy and he has these friends as well and the guys are in hollywood to try and you know get their film made they're all filmmakers the one's a writer the other one i think is like a writer as well and the one like wants to be the director you know one wants to be the actor and it's kind of them all together in hollywood trying to make this movie and they don't have anywhere to stay and reese witherspoon's like oh well you guys can stay here in my guest house and you know because she has a lot of money from her father who's a famous director and she lets the guy stay there and it's kind of all about her and this kind of you know relationship with this younger guy that really isn't is kind of a strange thing that's going on and then like her husband is kind of coming back around again trying to get back into the picture so it's kind of like this whole thing between the younger guy and the husband and all this kind of like comedic stuff and then it deals with the guys trying to get their movie made and things like that like I said this movie was okay nothing really that amazing to be totally honest it has on here though a commentary track with the director and producer uh, this is you know, Nancy Myers, who directed a number of uh, romantic comedies, her daughter, though, directed this one. It was her first movie. But, like, yeah, I'd say it's, like, worth, like, renting, like, but nothing amazing, though. Uh, the next one here from um, Sony is one called All Saints. This is a movie about a guy who comes in to, to be the pastor of this church. And it's a church that's just getting ready to be sold off because they, there's only like very few members of this church now. It's not really doing very well. They're not bringing in enough money to kind of keep it running. And they want to end up, it's getting, he basically comes in to be the pastor just for like the transition stage where they're going to be selling it. And then the church is going to become something else like a Walmart or something. So he's only going to be there for a little while during this transition stage where they're kind of packing things up and kind of moving things out and everything but he ends up getting there and it's kind of like he um, meets these these guys, this whole group of people who are, um, you know, refugees who came over from Asia. And he kind of like they he kind of becomes friends with them, and he comes up with what well, this is idea because they know about like the, the crops and planting things and stuff. With this idea that kind of comes to him because he believes like God spoke to him that he can kind of keep this church going by you know working with these these refugees who know about planting and and as well as the other members of the church and kind of. Be, turning the area around the church because it's all this farmland into a whole farming thing. So it's kind of them trying to do this to raise money to kind of, you know, keep the church going. And it's like, um, that's pretty much essentially what it is. It's like a, you know, a feel good kind of movie though about trying to save this church and everyone working together and stuff. Pretty well done, you know, a film on here and it has on here deleted scenes um, as well as um, a number of different featurettes as well as some things on here about filming locations and stuff. Uh, this one though, I was really excited about this because I think um, years back, I think in 2014, Fox announced that they were not going to be releasing Simpsons anymore on a physical format. It was only going to be like on demand and then like, like, um, I think there was like a 
uh, the FX app and stuff like that to watch it. But now Simpsons is finally coming back out again on a physical format and it's out now on DVD. This is the complete 18th season of The Simpsons. This has, you know, Fat Tony on the, on this cover. The thing that's always cool about these is they always have like a character on the cover of their releases. And they've, you know, they have had a number of different kind of, you know, uh, releases of these in the past. Like some of them were in those kind of cases that were like the big head of the characters. So they've been like all these different kind of renditions of them. But like I said, it's such a cool thing now that The Simpsons is coming out again on a physical format. So, you know, if you guys are a fan of this, most definitely pick this up. So hopefully they will continue releasing the other seasons. The season 19, I believe, had already come out years back because I think it was like for the anniversary or something. I remember that one released a while back, like years ago, before the other ones. But hopefully they continue on. But this has on here, though, some of the episodes that are on here. It has a, a one called 24 Minutes, which was a spoof of the show 24. Or, you know, a spoof episode, like a similar kind of style. Uh, has on here, Little Big Girl, Kill Gill, Volumes 1 and 2, The Wife Aquatic, uh, Ice Cream of Marge. It has, I believe, a Treehouse of Horrors on here. But it has... Um, a thing on here about welcome back about them releasing them again it has commentary tracks on every single episodes with the writers actors and directors it has a multi, multi angle animation showcase a special language feature because they always do that as well showing the show in other languages it has a commentary you know, conversation with fat tony it has deleted scenes but let me show you guys a look inside at this because it's an interesting kind of release of this because it's a little bit of a bigger kind of thing here because you can see uh, size wise it's like a little longer so it's an interesting kind of case but you open it up though and inside of it though I'll show you guys how this opens and here's inside you see you know Fat Tony and it opens up like this and you see the police officers you know Chief Wiggum I don't think Chief Wiggum is in there but you see Mo Sizlak in here and then the discs are behind it like this behind there and then um, you know it keeps opening up and you see Fat Tony playing cards in here. And there's also some artwork on the back as well. But a pretty cool, I, I like these kind of, Simpsons have always been like interesting kind of cases and releases. But in here though, there is a true crime type thing here, which has, is the, you know, the episode guide, which tells you about all the episodes that are in here, as well as the features and stuff like that. So definitely a very cool release here. And like I said, I'm really glad that, you know, Fox has decided to keep releasing these because, you know, I, I love having these actual physical releases. And that's, that's a show, too, that I've watched this forever, you know, ever since I was a little kid. It's one of those things I feel like has always been on, like, my entire life. And, like, one of those things you can kind of always count on being on. And hopefully the show goes on for a long time. Put that away later. But also here I got uh, from Fox as well to let you guys know about is the complete third season or Fargo year three. The thing with this show is it's not one of those shows where you have to see all the seasons because it's like almost like an anthology show or sort of like the way American Horror Stories is which each season is a totally different you know story with different actors and stuff the show like true um True Detective did the same thing too where it was like a totally different cast in each epi you know each season and stuff here but this one stars you know Ewan McGregor in a dual role and he plays like two really different like the these brothers and stuff and he, like I don't know I always a huge fan of you know Ewan McGregor uh, Mary Elizabeth Winstead is in the show but this is you know it's it's all about like um the the crime that they're kind of doing committing I only just started watching this though so I haven't seen too many of these and I didn't really see any of the um, past seasons. But like I said, though, they're their own standalone uh, seasons here. But they have on here a bunch of different featurettes from the show. They have um, Anatomy of a Scene on here. Thinking about the locations on this. But definitely a cool, like, crime show. And definitely in the same style, though, as the Fargo film. This one here is from Fox as well. This is 24 Legacy Season 1. And this is, you know... This is kind of like the spin-off new series of 24, and it doesn't have, you know, Kiefer Sutherland is in this one, in this series. Um, but, you know, Kiefer Sutherland was one of the producers of this. And it's actually kind of fun. I started watching this, and it's like, it's the same style, though, because I saw a few episodes of the original series, and it's all done kind of in real time. And it's, you know, each episode, you know, it's all what happens over a period of 24 hours. And they even, like, you know, when the commercials happen, you know, a commercial segment would be like four minutes, and it cuts, you know, it counts down like how many minutes have been gone during the commercials so it's all over a period like I said of 24 hours but this one is about this one guy who 
it was like special forces in the army and he was you know when him and a group of these people took out this terrorist and it was kind of like um the group that you know that he took out had kind of come back after him and tracked him down even though he changed his name and everything and kind of was in like the witness protection kind of hiding program he ended up tracking him down it's kind of like him and the, the people kind of coming after him as well as the other people on the team and it's kind of them trying to kind of get away and try and stop this guy as well that you know that are coming after him but a pretty fun kind of crazy like thriller show pretty good production values as well on this but this has on here though a feature out on here as well as deleted scenes and this one here from Gravitas Ventures is a movie called Thrill Ride. This is a pretty fun family movie. It's about um, Al Capone and like you know uh, Al Capone had this like secret treasure and like he um, this guy who was getting ready to build this theme park like this indoor theme park he needed money for it and Al Capone's like I'll give you the money to build this but you have to build this secret ride in the theme park that no one knows where it is where I'm going to hide a bunch of my money. So it's kind of like he does this. This is years later. This theme park now, as you know, set now, is getting ready to close down. This one father and his son, uh, you know, they work at this like antiques kind of store. And they're kind of going into the theme park to kind of clear it out, to sell some stuff off for them. Like right when this, before the place gets auctioned off, the big, you know, theme park. Of course, though, the father, though, is having financial problems as well, and he's about to lose the store. But the kids kind of find out, though, that, you know, they could get in there at night. His his son and his uh, his daughter and some of the friends, they find out about this place that they have access to get to into the... Um, you know, because the dad has the keys, so they want to sneak in there and try and find Al Capone's treasure to save the day, you know, and save the store. But what ends up happening, though, is uh, there's also these, like, mannequin kind of statues of, like, uh, a mermaid and these pirates and stuff. And they're said to be cursed and actually to be alive. They've kind of been turned to stone, and the father is messing around with one of them in the shop. And there's more of them as well in the theme park, but he messes around with one of them and then awakens them. And then all of them awaken at the uh, theme park. So all the kids are in there, these pirates come alive, and this mermaid and stuff. It's kind of them dealing with all this because the mermaids are trying to get back the wand from um, the one who awoke, you know, the father accidentally awoken because they need the wand to like do these powers and stuff that they want to do with it. So it's kind of this whole thing about them trying to find the treasure as well, though, as having to deal with these pirates and stuff, you know, kind of coming after them. It's kind of a fun, like, like kind of sort of like Goonies style type movie here um, and on here. But I I thought this was actually kind of a fun movie. Next one here, though, from um, from Paramount is the TV series uh, Zoo. This is the complete third season of the show, and this one takes place ten years after the other, you know, seasons. Um, you know, this is you know because it's continuing on the story because the original series was like the the um, animals on Earth had all kind of gone crazy. Something had happened to them, and they start kind of attacking people. So it's like lions and everything going after everyone attacking them. But this is now 10 years later, and the team that was like responsible for, you know, stopping these animals and trying to find a cure. But there was also something released to kind of sterilize the whole population of humans. So now this is like a new form. New, the people now are trying to figure out how to cure the sterilization that happened, as well as there's this new mutated form form of these animals that are now coming after them that are like these hybrid kind of crazy like creatures coming after them so it's the kind of people now trying to find survivors still as well as to kind of fight off these crazy like mutated forms of the animals kind of a fun like creature kind of like um, survival type show about them all the team kind of coming back together and trying to stop these and trying to find to, you know the cure for the sterilization as well as these animals but it has on here though uh, deleted scenes on here it has a visual effects reel as well as a gag reel on this release here this one here I really like this movie a lot this one I'll put a link though for you guys can order this one um, this is a movie called super dark times and I read too that this apparently I don't know if that's true was only made for twenty thousand dollars, but looks amazing. Like if they if they did do this for only twenty four thousand dollars, I mean twenty thousand dollars, they did an amazing job. But this is a really like uh, dark movie though about these friends. That are, it's kind of like a. It's all set in the nineties. It's it's um about these two friends, um and they're out there one day with their some of their the one friend and they uh, two of their other friends that they meet like um and they're messing around with this samurai sword. They're kind of screwing around with it. 
and the one kid ends up getting stabbed and killed by accident by the samurai sword. And the kids are like, what are we going to do? Oh, we don't want to go to jail. And they come up with the idea that they're going to just throw the sword down into like this hole in the, in the woods and kind of leave the body out there and kind of like, kind of like act like they didn't know what happened and kind of it's, but it's like about the one kid though, after this has happened, he's kind of starting to kind of go crazy and starting to get stressed out all the time. He's not the same anymore, the way he's acting. Uh, the other kids, uh, the, both the other kids are kind of weird as well. And they, uh, they're, and the one one friend is like not wanting to talk to the other one and he's being really distant and it, it also deals with um the one kid's meet, having this girlfriend and he starts this girl he likes and sort of starts to see starts to see but he kind of can't you know think about anything else about what they did and he's having these terrible dreams about the kid kind of coming back to life and kind of haunting him at night and it's a really gloom but amazing movie kind of with the style a little bit of the movie Mean Creek kind of has that sort of feel to this really really great acting though highly recommend you guys check this out check out the trailer for this one like I said I love that one that was a, such a great movie this one as well I'll put a link for where you guys can order this one and this is another one that I, I really did kind of like it's a movie called called Dark Signal and it's a pretty creepy movie here it's about um, these two, this uh, couple that are going to rob this house because they, the one guy is like says his friend owes him money and he needs to go and get it from him. And he's like tells the one girl to sort of sit in the car and she has this radio she's going to listen to while she's in the car. And she works for this radio station. It kind of cuts back and forth to her listening to the radio and her friend works at the radio station. And it's kind of like that radio station, though, is getting ready to close. It's going to be their last night for their last broadcast. And it's going to be turning into a digital station and everyone's fired. It's going to be a whole new crew and everything. But um, for the last night, they bring in this psychic to kind of come in there and see if they can talk to spirits and stuff. But when they do this, though, this, this something had, had happened in this house where the, the one couple is going to rob. And something happens and you sort of, this, you sort of see this ghostly woman there. And then it also deals with um, this one f guy who's like on the land, like yelling at the woman, going, "What are you doing out here?" And he's like, "Oh, I'm waiting for my boyfriend. We broke down. We'll get. We'll get we'll, he needs to go and get gas and stuff." And he's like, "Well, I'll drive you into town and stuff." And she's like, "No, no, I need to stay out here." And it it has this whole thing back and forth between what's going on with this woman who's waiting for her boyfriend who's breaking into the house, as well as the weird stuff that's going on in this radio station. They start hearing this weird, this weird like screamings and someone saying they need help and stuff. It's a very creepy movie. I can't say too much more about it, but I really did get into this one and it definitely had a different kind of feel to this one. It didn't go in all the directions that I thought it was going to. Uh, the next one here from HBO, and this is, um, the complete seventh season of the show Game of Thrones here. It's kind of hard to see the cover here, but it's, um, I, I think I actually put it in here backwards. Yeah, so the, this is how it's supposed to be in here, the cover here as the character on the front. And I'll show you guys a little look inside of here. And I just started watching this. I never really, I only have ever saw some clips of the show in the past. I never had seen full episodes and stuff. And it's actually a pretty cool show, to be honest. Like, I definitely do now want to go back and look at the early seasons of this show and try and actually watch it. Because I do have season one and two. I've never actually, you know, seen it. And one thing, too, I wanted to ask, too, was, um, like, I saw, like, in here, too, like, Ed Sheeran had, like, a cameo in here. And so I'm like, has this show, have, has there been kind of, like, interesting cameos like this in this show in the past? Like, people, like, who are in it for, like, an episode or, like, in the background saying, like, one or two lines and stuff that are, like, kind of bigger stars? Is that something this show has done in the past? Because that was kind of interesting, too, seeing Ed Sheeran in here acting. Because the only other thing I ever saw him act in was, you know, Bridget Jones's Diary, the newest one. But it has on here, though, uh, in-episode guides here, a bunch of different featurettes on here, commentary tracks, so tons and tons of different features, as well as this bonus um, animated, animated thing here called Conquest and Rebellion, the Animated History of the Seven Kingdoms. This is like a bonus thing here. I don't know if this is like, um, you know, everywhere will have this bonus edition or not, but this is one thing I want to let you guys know, you know, comes with this one. Uh, the next one here from uh, Twilight Time, this is one that's limited to 3,000 copies, and this is the original Dr. Doolittle, and I had never actually seen this one before because I remember seeing, um, you know, of course, the Eddie Murphy one, and I remember always watching that one and thought it was a fun movie, and this is actually the original one, which was actually a musical, and it's, um, 
I think it's from yeah, 1967. It's a pretty fun movie, though. It's about, you know, Dr. Doolittle's character, and he's trying to, you know, find this certain type of species that he's trying to find. And it's all about, like, kind of his journey, and, like, there's all kinds of goofy stuff with him talking to the animals, and he has, like, all these scenes to all these animals all over the place and stuff, and him kind of, like, um, trying to find the species and stuff and like and it cuts to songs and like th th singing and stuff like that it kind of has the songs kind of reminds me of like um you know peach dragon a little bit it's around that kind of era era and they made a couple other ones like that were around this time too like um huck finn and stuff like that but really really great picture quality on this one and it has on here though isolated music track commentary track on here with singer songwriter on this as well as uh rex harryhausen uh feature out on here the man who would be king as well as a theatrical trailer but a pretty fun movie here and we'll let you guys know you know this one is available and the next ones here are from Olive Films, and these are from their line, um, the Olive Signature Collection. And these are ones where they have, you know, that have been released in the past from Olive Films, but they have brand new 4K transfers on them, as well as a new features on them, as well as a booklet. And there's two different ones here. Uh, the one here is called A New Leaf, and the other one is A Letter from a Woman. And this one has on here, though, like I said, the brand new 4K transfer, a commentary track on here uh, with Max Opius Expert, uh, as well as an interview on here with Os Oscar-winning documentary on here as well as some other featurettes on this but the one I really want to talk to you guys about is the Walter Matthau one uh, New Leaf this one it was Elaine, May, Elaine May who also wrote and directed the original Heartbreak Kid and she um wrote Birdcage is probably one of my favorite movies of all time you know favorite comedies like favorite Robin Williams movies just an amazing way I watched that movie so many times but she wrote that one as well but this movie is um like I said it also has a booklet in here with some pictures and stuff about the movie but it's about Walter Matthau's character who you know it's like an eccentric millionaire who has all this money but he ends up finding out that he doesn't have money anymore he's like made all these kind of crazy investments and he buys things without thinking about it kind of blew through all of his money so he's totally flat broke and he doesn't know what he's going to do and he thinks like well I guess I might have to just kill myself and I don't know how I'm, what I'm going to do but then he comes up with this idea um, talking to his butler and butler's like well maybe you could find someone with money and he's like well I could find a wife that I could marry and kill her you know a rich woman and then take her money so it's kind of him meeting Elaine May's character who is this like millionaire who has like all this property and stuff but she's kind of really weird and a little goofy and stuff and it's kind of him you know kind of starting to date her and trying to marry her as quick as he can because since he had like no money he had to borrow money from his uncle fifty thousand dollars and he has to get married like within like three weeks or something otherwise he has to give the uncle everything he owns because he has the house and stuff that he could sell for money and stuff but he has to give everything to his uncle if he doesn't marry this woman um there's an interesting feature on here too talking about how this movie had a lot of et recuts and stuff because originally i think it was like three hours long and then they took the film away from elaine may and paramount like did all these kind of edits and chains all around so you could kind of tell the movie kind of certain things go a little quicker than they should but that footage is like totally lost but uh the transfer on here is amazing absolutely you know beautiful like looks amazing one of these ones too i don't know how i never saw before but definitely one like if you guys have seen this movie before let me know what you guys think but really really fun movie the next one here from um high octane pictures and this movie stars dante bosco you know from hook who you know played rufio and hook you know, he's also in Buddy Machir later. This movie is called Sightings. And this is about these bodies that are found on this family's farm. And they're like kind of, their organs are all missing and something really weird going on. And like the police don't know what's going on. And then the daughter is like, well, we should write a paper about this and we could write it in the newspaper and it could be a big thing. And the dad's like, oh, and it's kind of like um, Donnie Bosco's character kind of comes in to put security cameras around the property. But it's kind of like, um, a whole weird thing about them trying to figure out exactly you know was this like an was this aliens and because like they couldn't find like any signs of anyone on the land you know and i don't know how the bodies got there because it almost seemed like they were drained somewhere else and put there but they have no signs of how this was here so it's all about them trying to figure out exactly what had happened and how these bodies got there and kind of trying to investigate the thing about what what, what was this and what was involved with how this happened and stuff but a pretty interesting kind of story like a little bit of a different kind of movie here has on here though a behind the scenes featurette a commentary track on here as as well as cast interviews the last one here i only have the disc for this one this one is up on demand now it's a movie called somebody's darling and um this movie is basically though about um 
it's kind of about like this fraternity house where um like kind of it's a really fancy kind of fraternity house and they're kind of weird people that are there and they end up um they end up, the one guy who's like the head of the fraternity meets this one woman and it's kind of like a, about obsession and about him kind of being coming obsessed with this one woman but in the fraternity though they're kind of up to no good they're doing some really weird kind of bad stuff and they're kind of like you know a lot of fraternities are known for like weird stuff but this fraternity is doing some really bad stuff and they kind of start to find out more about how this fraternity has all this kind of money and how it's like much bigger than other fraternities and and it's also like I said it deals with him becoming obsessed with this woman and all the weird stuff that's going on and stuff on that one but a pretty interesting kind of fraternity kind of weird stuff going on film but anyway though guys that's all for the review portion of this video thanks again for watching and subscribing and i'll see you guys later